Now the final point of our agenda is where does safety stock come from? How do we figure out why we have it and what it should be? So I've drawn a picture of our ideal scenario and then something that's much more dangerous. So here we are where we, at the point where we make our forecast. The dotted line shows the forecast. Uh, we have a lead time. We know when to order. We know how much to order. And we expect that the future will be the inventory dropping through this dotted line. Then the replenishment comes in and, and continues. And we're always above the safety stock. So we're in a comfortable place. But the red line shows what happens if our forecast is wrong. Perhaps someone got ambitious and did a marketing campaign and suddenly there is a higher demand for this finished good than we expected in our forecast. That means, following the red line, that our um, actual on-hand inventory is going to be much lower than we expected. But we're, we've set the wheels in motion for the, ER, the ERP system to order this much at this time and will come in at this time. What's actually happening is our inventory on hand is depleting faster than we thought. This order will actually come in here and reverse that trend temporarily and give us a little bit of a bump and then we're, we're going down according to the new higher level of demand. So what the safety stock has done for us is it has let us go below our comfortable level, but it has kept us above zero. It has avoided or postponed a stock out. And that's why we have the safety stock. Because we're thinking that our best guess is the dotted line forecast, but we recognize that life may give us the red line forecast. And as a result, the safety stock has, has prevented a, a stock out and has delayed a reckoning. And presumably we could then make a new forecast which would take account of the new level of demand and try to recover. There may be in our future a temporary stock out, but we have a plan that will react to that because the new forecast will have better information about demand. So you can see that demand forecast accuracy is critical to making sure we avoid stockouts. And as adults, you realize that it's not possible to always anticipate future demand perfectly. So there's always a chance of stockouts, but the safety stock minimizes that chance. Now, how would we actually set the safety stock? Well, we would take account not only of what the expected forecast is, but we'd go up a level and we'd say, what is the margin of error in the forecast? And understanding the uncertainty of the forecast is the basis for looking at safety stock. So now we'll make a different kind of picture. We will show a picture of what we think the cumulative demand will be over um, our lead time. So now we have a different kind of plot. We have cumulative demand. And we realize that that could be anything from zero to some big number. And what we're going to show is all the possibilities. And we'll express this in terms of probabilities now. So now probability theory comes into the demand planning process. And we have an expected forecast. That's this dotted line. And it says we think uh, that there will be a certain total demand over the lead time. So this is the expected forecast. And usually the one we're planning from is the one that's most likely. So this will have a high probability, but it won't be a certainty. And so we could imagine a process where we think about other, other possibilities, where other values of demand also have some chance of occurring. And that would be a picture that looks something like this. The heights of these would come from a an analysis of the variation in demand over time. 
because the demand is never rock solid, it's always bubbling up and down and that creates the uncertainty and it gets compounded when you add together uncertain demands over a lead time. So you have this picture of the possible values of cumulative lead time and conceptually the way we work with that is we draw a line up here above the expected forecast and we say um, we will try to set the safety stock at a level which will cover most of the contingencies. Maybe this red line covers 90% of the possible ways the demand could play out. And the gap between this 90, so let's say the 90th percentile and the expected forecast, this is the safety stock. That's how we calculate a safety stock. We say there's a, we're going to accept a certain risk of stocking out and we're going to calculate the difference between that risk level in the cumulative demand and the expected forecast and we're going to build in this buffer and that means that all of these scenarios, the other 10 percent, could actually create, would actually create stockouts. So if we don't like a 10 percent risk of stockout, then we move this level up, we expand the safety stock, a bigger buffer, and maybe now the remaining is just say a 5 percent chance of a stockout here. So we can calculate ahead of time, based on our risk preferences, what it is that we want to use as a safety stock. And we use that for setting the safety stock level. It's a separate calculation involving the risk that the company wants to take of not having this finished good available when it's demanded. Offsetting that will be other cost consequences because a bigger safety stock keeps us farther from a zero inventory, which means we have to invest more of our cash in the inventory and we have more on hand so we have larger um, holding costs but we also have lower shortage costs so we're again on a kind of universal trade-off curve between the cost of managing the inventory on one hand and the availability of the product to customers on the other the analysis will tell us where what the shape of that cost curve is, the trade-off curve. And then management has to decide on where's a tolerable position to be at this point in the company's operations, what risk of stock out are we willing to accept, and what operating costs are we also willing to accept. And they find that equilibrium point, at least for a quarter, for instance, and arrange for the ERP system to make that happen.